Today we talk about the mysticism behind the mathematician that changed the course of reality. Thank you for your support to this channel we have been growing a lot in the last weeks and we are always grateful for you being here to explore new ideas. Let's dive in. Isaac Newton is often remembered as the father of modern science, the man who discovered gravity, formulated the laws of motion, and revealed the optical nature of light. Yet behind the image of the rational physicist was a profoundly spiritual seeker. Newton believed that the universe was a living revelation of divine intelligence, that every law of nature was a symbol written by the mind of God. He studied not only mathematics and physics, but also alchemy, theology, prophecy, and the Bible. To Newton, science and spirituality were not separate pursuits, they were two languages describing the same divine order. He saw light as the first emanation of God, gravity as the invisible bond of divine love that holds creation together, and the human mind as a mirror of the cosmic intelligence that sustains all things. Beneath his formulas, Newton sought the spirit behind the forces, the consciousness that moves the stars and awakens the soul. Light as the presence of God. Newton's fascination with light was not purely scientific, it was metaphysical. When he split sunlight into its spectrum through a prism, he saw more than color. He saw the signature of the divine. In his private writings, Newton described light as the active spirit of God permeating matter. He believed that all creation was bathed in an invisible ocean of luminous intelligence through which divine energy gives form and life to the world. This reflected an ancient intuition, that light is both physical and spiritual, both wave and wisdom. In this Newton anticipated later thinkers who would speak of consciousness as the light through which all perception arises. For him, light was the bridge between God and nature, revealing a cosmic unity between mind, matter, and illumination. It was not just a property of physics, it was a divine medium of awareness itself, gravity and the invisible intelligence of nature. When Newton discovered gravity, he was not describing a mere mechanical force, he was unveiling what he believed to be the invisible presence of God in creation. Gravity, he wrote, acts continually and instantaneously at a distance, binding the cosmos in perfect harmony. To him, this was not chance, it was divine will made visible through law. Newton refused to explain gravity as a blind mechanism, he saw it as the direct expression of a conscious, guiding intelligence. This hidden intelligence was, for Newton, the same presence that sustains the harmony of the planets and the breath of the soul. Every apple falling, every orbit moving in silence, was a hymn to the eternal mind. In this vision, natural law was the language of divine reason, and gravity, far from being merely physical, was a reflection of love itself, the unseen attraction that draws all things toward unity. The secret theologian, God, Scripture, and the hidden code of creation. Unknown to most, Newton wrote more on theology and alchemy than on physics. His manuscripts on prophecy, biblical chronology, and the hidden meanings of scripture filled thousands of pages. He believed that the Bible contained a veiled account of divine science, an encoded cosmology revealing the structure of creation. To Newton, God was not a distant deity, but the living intelligence continuously manifesting in the world. He interpreted the scriptures as symbolic maps of divine order, where historical events mirrored spiritual truths. His faith was not blind belief, but a quest for understanding, a form of mystical science that sought to read the mind of God in both scripture and nature. For Newton, revelation was not confined to miracles or dogma, it was embedded in the mathematical harmony of the universe itself, the soul, immortality, and the continuum of life. Newton's spiritual vision extended beyond physical life, he believed in the immortality of the soul and the moral evolution of consciousness across time. While he never explicitly endorsed reincarnation, his writings hinted a belief in spiritual continuity, that the soul grows through successive experiences, ascending toward divine perfection. For Newton, death was not an end but a transformation, the dissolution of form back into light. He speculated, that the same universal principles governing motion and energy applied to the spiritual world, where consciousness continues to refine itself in higher dimensions. The soul, he thought, is bound by divine law just as matter is, drawn ever upward by the same invisible gravity that holds the stars. This revealed a unified cosmology, one where matter and spirit are governed by a single intelligence, and where the journey of the soul mirrors the motion of the heavens. Alchemy and the Transmutation of Consciousness Newton's obsession with alchemy was not madness, as later critics claimed, 
It was a spiritual science aimed at understanding the inner nature of reality. He studied the transformation of metals as symbols of the transformation of the soul, believing that material alchemy mirrored divine creation. The process of turning lead into gold represented the awakening of divine consciousness within human limitation. For Newton, the alchemist's laboratory was a sacred space, a microcosm of the universe where the human being could participate in the divine act of creation. Through purification, meditation and insight, consciousness could rise from density to light. Modern readers see in this a proto-psychological insight that nature's evolution is a mirror of the inner evolution of awareness. Newton's alchemy then was not about material wealth, it was about realizing that the true gold is the divine spark within, the hidden unity of science and spirit. In the end, Newton's greatest revelation was not just about motion or light, it was about the unity of knowledge and faith. He saw no division between science and spirituality, reason and revelation, both were ways of knowing the same divine order. The universe, he wrote, is a most beautiful system composed of the sun, planets, and comets, all arising from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. His laws of motion and gravity were not intended to banish mystery but to illuminate it, to show that intelligence permeates every level of existence. To study the cosmos for Newton was to participate in God's own act of awareness. Science was the modern form of worship. Kantesornform's contemplation of the divine mind through the elegance of creation. His vision reminds us that consciousness and the cosmos are not separate, they are reflections of the same light, one infinite intelligence shining through every law, every atom, and every soul. The light that never dies. Isaac Newton's genius lay not only in revealing the mechanics of the universe but in perceiving the spirit that moves within them. For him, light was the divine awareness illuminating both the cosmos and the human soul. Gravity was the invisible love binding creation into one, and the soul's destiny was to return, through knowledge and devotion, to the source of all being. In an age that often separates science from spirituality, Newton's life offers a bridge. A reminder that truth is one, expressed through both equation and prayer, through experiment and contemplation. Beneath the prism and the telescope he found the same mystery, a universe alive with consciousness, radiant with the light of the infinite. If you got to this point, you are a legend, thank you so much for keeping with us and watching our videos. Remember to check out the description below for recommended literature to expand on this topic. And please, like and subscribe, it is the best and most simple way to support this project. See you tomorrow for a new video. And please suggest topics you would like us to talk about next.